we're here to talk about the Grizzly Corridor Project. The idea being to actually create travel routes for grizzly bears through forests that are pretty dense, a lot of trees. You've done this on a piece of heckle ground up the Boulder Valley near Troy. Whose idea was that? Well, the, the Heckle project originated from a conversation I was having with Doug Stiles when we were talking about firewising their properties in Montana. Mm -hmm. They own a significant amount of acreage here and they're wanting to be a good neighbor and making sure that, <clears throat> that their properties, the fuels are treated on it, but they, Heckle being Heckle, also wanted to see if there was anything above and beyond they could do while we were treating their property. Mm -hmm. Particularly with regards to grizzly bear, if there's any way to enhance or maybe even create some habitat that would help in their recovery. And, and so Chaz came to us and said, hey, you know, you guys should probably really thin this. I'm like, yeah, we should. Uh, and, you know, you know what we're trying to do here. We're, our goal for the facility was, was wildlife. Mm -hmm. And so, we're like, what can we do to enhance it? What can we do? through this, through the, the thinning to essentially enhance the overall wildlife habitat of the area. So, you know, and Chaz really kind of took that and ran with it. He, he was like, well, I'll so, get Wayne on the phone and let's talk to Wayne. I was like, that is a great idea. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> Chaz called me and, and I, you know, I'd been here for a while. I'd met Chaz in other venues, opportunities, other sorts of things. And so he, he knew me as the grizzly bear biologist. So he uh, asked me to come out and take a look at a logging job that uh, he was doing on some Hecla land and just asked me for uh, some opinions on some things. What'd you tell him? And he looked over the property and determined that while there was a great amount of security on the property, there wasn't a lot of forage looking at plant communities that might benefit bears or other species. Some of the things need somewhat moister conditions. So we talked about where there's depressions, drainage areas, try and leave some additional cover in that, leave some of those spots. And while you open up the canopy a little bit so that sunlight gets in, you might stimulate some growth of some things in those wetter spots that might benefit deer, elk, even bears, berry production species, as well as things that grow in the understory that might provide forage. So we talked about how best to create that forage with a pretty big problem in that area because there's what they have uh, right next to adjoining the western pieces of their property is Lake Creek Road. And that is the access to a high use recreation area, Spar Lake, mm -hmm. up the valley. So you have a lot of traffic in there, and that's one of the things that the biologists were concerned about. Misidentification of bears during hunting season is, is one of the biggest problems that they, that they worry about. A couple of the suggestions that I gave him, uh, I said, you know, try and do things in a patchy manner. Don't do the same prescription overwear. You know, leave some clumps of cover. Try and pick out some tree species or some, some things that are growing here that you can leave. Um, try thinking about, there's a road that goes right by it, a yep. pretty main road. We talked about leaving some cover along the edge of the road because he's going to open things up on the inside. And in terms of sight lines uh, for people being able to see into that, I'm pretty sure it's a popular deer hunting or our hunting area. And maybe if we're going to create some good habitat for some animals in there, let's give them a chance to use it. The problem with the treatment was how do you create forage? How do you thin this, make it firewise, and provide security for those animals? And after the discussion with Mr. Casworm, I, I thought, you know, I better get a hold of what I would probably regard as one of the best foresters in Montana. So I called up Andy Eckberg from Idaho Forest Group told him what we were looking at, what we were trying to accomplish, and wanted his input. Chas had a, had, a, had a plan of what he was wanting to do. We had hit goals and objectives that he had been talking to the biologist for, for Hecla, and then when I was out visiting with Chas, I, I mentioned some of the neat things we were doing with small group selection type harvests that we've been doing on some of the landowners. It'd be like thick areas, thin areas, and open areas intermixed and mm -hmm. type of group selection. and. 
what Chas was talking about with the heckle mine properties is, you know, with the grizzly bears, we were concerned about some of the, you know, it's a high use recreation area where they're talking because you have the, um, you know, the far lake up there. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to create some habitat, but at the same time, keep it some wildlife security so that the bears could have good use for mm -hmm. some of the habitat they were, mm -hmm. we could create through through logging, but at the same time not open it up so they lose the security of the area, you know, from the road and such. When Chas was explaining to me how the mine wanted to use timber harvesting to increase uh, Cruz and Barra habitat, we thought, oh, absolutely, that's when I mentioned it to him, we'd love to be involved with that. And he was excited about it, excited to, to work on something like that, so he showed up with a bunch of rolls of ribbon and a couple cans of paint and spent a day uh, marking and ribboning off areas, exclusion areas, and opening up areas, uh, identifying leave trees, that type of thing. For, did a couple acres of the couple hundred acres there, and then we used that as a template to treat the remaining acres. We knew we had to do something there. I mean, it was so overgrown. Yeah. Um, you know, and we have you know 800 acres of, of property around the tailings facility, so. You know, when we were looking at doing that reclamation and starting the reclamation on the tailings facility, you really can't get the most out of it unless you address it all. Well, what we worked out was uh, just making some of the thinning units around some of the large component that was up there. It was beautiful, large. And uh, so why not have a thinning type of individual tree selection around the large? and open it up and treat for fuels at the same time open up the large and then balance that out with some small some other areas that we'd outline to as leave areas that were thick areas for for cover and um, at the same time outline some other smaller units that would be opened up as little pocket openings to create the habitat so that we could create some forage positions but Chaz had talked to Mm -hmm. The biologist and and uh, you know he had relate to me what they were talking about making some openings and that's where I suggested uh, kind of the the group selection type mm -hmm. of scenario because I've been using it quite re regularly on uh, private landowners. One of the one of the things I always hear is they want to improve habitat, grow trees, sustainable growth, but at the same time they like big game hunting and it's about combining landowner objectives and goals with the, the BMPs and doing it sustainably. You were telling me earlier that you actually have found grizzly bear tracks mm -hmm. in the tailings. In the... Yeah, during when, when Troy Mine was operating, and this kind of goes back to that wildlife corridor concept, mm -hmm. right? Uh, during Troy Mine operation, they 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 tracked a grizzly bear that that essentially walked straight over the tailings facility while it was operating. So the mine was operating, people going up the road every day. And you look at this caller data, and they they had released, I think Fish and Wildlife Service had released a grizzly bear, a female, up Spar up by Spar Lake, tracked her across the tailings facility up into Glacier, tracked her back across the tailings facility up over to Spar Lake, and we have pictures of of her paw prints in the wet tails. It's, it's pretty cool and, and not something that you would expect. That's on top of the elk and the deer and the moose and the western toad, which is a kind of a species of concern that loves that, that area for, mm -hmm. uh, for breeding. Um, it's, that whole area is, is just teeming with wildlife. You know, it's, it's really a, definitely a mosaic approach to, to the management with some may call it edge effect cuts uh, or shaded fuel break type of, of prescriptions. Mm -hmm. I would say it's kind of a hybrid of the two um, from my perspective. And we would also create openings in areas, uh, little regeneration areas mm -hmm. that uh, had good soil and was likely to grow some of the, the mm -hmm. legumes that, you know, a little down lower in the, in the more in the riparian areas. We did a lot of that type of work, um, which, Time will tell, but we're really confident that it's going to have really good uh, results. I think you know the change when you remove the, the the forest or thin out the forest. A lot of people's first 
impression is kind of shock. Well, gosh, that's a lot different than it used to look. There used to be a solid bunch of trees here. Now I can see a long ways. Sometimes perspectives like that's a good thing or that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But come back in a few years, see what it looks like then. So I guess if you had a chance to do this again, you would. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it, you know, the interesting thing is there, there, no one requires you to do, to do anything with your private property. You know, you, you could let it grow, you could let it um, overgrow, but mm -hmm. that's it, really not the right thing to do. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we've got neighbors there and we want to make sure, we want to do what we can with our property to help protect theirs from wildfire. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, it, it, it really works well with the reclamation that we were doing at the tailings facility, mm -hmm. which, and the goal there was wildlife habitat. So to essentially bring in, enhance the wildlife habitat in the 400 acres that we own that isn't part of that tailings facility, mm -hmm. combine that with what we've done on the tailings facility from a reclamation perspective, it just all made sense. We have hundreds of thousands of acres on the Kootenai National Forest of the same vegetation type as we managed on at that Heckler property. A lot of it is in grizzly bear core or adjacent to grizzly bear core, and again, provides great security for the bear. The problem is, is that they don't eat trees, and we have to create forage for that animal if we want it to not only have security, but also maybe hang out, maybe reproduce, and maybe recover.